Sound so sure of yourself, I said. Yeah. Claw that light. Get the fuck on. Bye. You want to be with the damn girl? And oh my God, if Claudette knew it was a little girl. Oh. Well, uh, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com for these super fly shades and if you're not already a part of this book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's continue talking about inside my life by Smokey Robinson. I just wanted to say that if I had known your daughter's age, I told Meta's mama, I would not have dated her. It doesn't surprise me that Meta lied about her age, said the tough talking woman, because when she wants something, she's very determined. But why are you calling me? Why are you telling me this? I'm not sure. It's just, you didn't have to call. I felt compelled. Feels to me like you really care about her. Look, can I come and see you? Why? I guess I'd like to explain how I feel in person. She agreed. And I met with Meta's mama, just the two of us. Now, at this point, I thought that the mama was going to be just as sexy as the daughter. And then Smokey was going to turn around and climb on top of the mama. But maybe the mama might have been too old for She mama. saw I was sincere. She said you could have run away from this situation, but you haven't. You've falling in love with Meta. I can see that. But you also have a wife. And as the mama, I would have said the same thing. What's going on here? What are you doing? You, 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 you got the Claudette. And you got kids. What you doing? Don't play these games with my daughter. This is the reality of how I would do things. Okay? I would talk to my daughter. Daughter. This Smokey Robinson. You know that this is a married man with children. You know he got money now. You know he got that Motown vice president money. Okay? And some of them residuals from all them songs he wrote. He gonna hurt you. I would break it down to my daughter. This is the reality of it. It's a 90% chance that he's gonna carry you. Okay, 90% don't fall in love with this nigga. I need you to sneak and find somebody else. Even if you don't want to be bothered with that somebody else. So the I next time a spinner or, or, or a Ohio player come through, I'm going to need you to pull that same thing on them. I know you got feelings now, but like I told you, I need you to go on around there. Find you cool from cool in the gang or the JT, whoever. And I need you to pull that same bullshit on them. She saw I was sincere. She said you could have run away from this situation, but you haven't. You've fallen in love with Meta. I can see that. But you also have a wife. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Are you sure you know what you're getting yourself into? A situation like this could be very hard on your wife and on my daughter, but especially on you. We were both having a lousy day on the links, me and Marvin Gaye. On the way to the golf course, we'd been followed by female fans. It took us a while to lose them. Marvin and Anna had moved to LA a little after me, though their marriage was stormier than ever. Dad's career was still blazing hot. Distant lover was burning up the charts, but he was as schizoid as ever, bouncing between religion and raunch. Smokey Robinson told you earlier that Marvin Gaye was a lunchbox. He's continuing to tell you that this ninja is a lunchbox. So everything that Jan Gay was saying in her book, I wholeheartedly believed. I wholeheartedly believed it before, but I definitely believe it now. Met someone who just blows my mind, Smoke, he said as we teed off, his ball bouncing into a nasty trap. 
Got the same problem, Dad, but I'm fixing to wipe her from my system. I shanked my ball deep into a grove of bushes. How do you wipe a woman from your system? Asked Dad. Perseverance, I said. Mental discipline. Marvin chuckled, his eyes sliding across his face in definite disbelief. Is she younger than Claudette? Yes, I confessed. But I'm still in love with Claudette. We're spending more time together. Having talks, talking, walking, making love. I'm doing everything to concentrate on my marriage, man. But that's my story. How are you doing everything to concentrate on your marriage when you're spending time with the girl? What's yours? Who's this fine young thing you found, Dad? Janice. Janice. Young and gorgeous. There's no resisting. I'm going to resist, man, I said. I'm telling you, I'm absolutely, positively forgetting I ever met Meta. Why forget? Because I love her too much. We're always going to be tested, Smoke, said Dad in his whimsical way. And we're always going to fail. I wanted to respond, but I figured I better find my ball first. First and foremost, I told Claudette, I don't want to hurt you. You've done that already, Smoke. I didn't mean to. Look... Smokey, save the speeches. Just tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to move out. Permanently? I don't know. I can't say. All I know is that for months I've tried to forget this woman and I haven't been able to. It's not fair to you. Then go. You sound so sure of yourself, I said. Yeah. Claw that like, get the fuck on. Bye. You want to be with the damn girl? And oh my God, if Claudette knew it was a little girl. Oh. In the life, there is always issues. Like when I was in the life, meaning that uh, I was going to the clubs because that's what I called the life. You can be in a same-sex relationship and never enter into the life. Those of you who are part of the life or have experienced the life understand what the hell it is. It's a whole bunch of bullshit, okay? And you having a good, reckless time, all right, while you're in the life. And I'm going to tell you, I lost one of my first girlfriends to the life because we would go out to clubs. And I mean, the way that the clubs work is it's like a merry-go-round. You see who you want, you wait your turn, and eventually the person who you want will make their way to you because it's the life it's just this it's just a circle of everybody eventually getting who they want not everybody but you know you know what i'm trying to say right and man i'm telling you this young girl she was young she was like 15 my girlfriend was like 26 and when i say this woman wanted my girlfriend i had a job i had to get up in the morning okay and i couldn't go out all the time come to find out when i wasn't going out with her she was going out and entertaining this young girl. And don't be surprised when I'm saying 15 years old. That shit happens all the time where there is a, a age gap that you be like, what? Yes. Yes. Because it'd be so many runaways in the life who parents turn their back on them that they have no other choice but to get with an older, more established uh, partner. Okay, and that's what happened. This girl was she was out of she was out of whack. You hear me? I mean, this was old treacherous young girl. You know, she didn't seen things in life and done things in life that I would never do. You know, and my girlfriend at the time she was enamored by all that. I figured I had to let her go because when it's getting back to me that my girlfriend is hanging out with this fifteen year old girl, then no. Fuck it then. And they ended up getting together after I left her because I was like, if you want the young and you can have her. And I feel the same way that Claudette feels. If you want to leave, then leave. Bye, bitch. I'm not going to let you know. I'm not going to beg you. Please, Lord, please don't leave me. Bullshit the baker. Bullshit the baker. Bye, you bitch. You sound so sure of yourself, I said. I'm not sure of anything, but I know I can't keep you if you don't want to stay. Word. And I've never, and I've got too much pride to beg. Word. If you want to be alone and try to find yourself, Smokey, do it. Word. Just get out before I lose my temper. Word. 
Get the fuck out. Now. Bitch. I was out for a year. Lived alone in an apartment. Saw Meta, but also saw Claudette. The more I worked on putting myself together, the more I tore myself apart. Meta was super fine. A passion, a comfort, a great companion. But Claudette was a woman of dignity and depth. The more I was away from her, the more I loved her. The more I wanted her, the more I kept going back, switching between the two. Certain that my feelings for one didn't exclude the other, but uncertain of how it would all end. Marriage vows were on my mind. Two of the world's sweetest people, Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson Five. What? Jermaine Jackson? Okay, i move forward. Maybe he think he's sweet because he married Hazel. And Barry's daughter, Hazel Joy, got married. Hazel asked me to write something and sing it at the ceremony. I did. It was a beautiful wedding with white doves. Afterwards, business went on as usual. Much to my dismay, the miracles decided to disconnect from Motown. On the heels of their two hits, CBS offered them big bucks up front. Couldn't resist the cash. CBS didn't like their first effort. Kept it on the shelf and never really communicated the problem. Slowly but surely, the miracles were fading out. Eleven months after I'd moved out, I was up at the Beverly Hills house, hanging out with Five and Tamla. You know, that's his daughter. I came to visit nearly every day, seeing how she had her honorary grandpa wrapped around her finger. You better go up and see little Barry, said Daddy. He's been looking for you. I feel bad. Why should you feel bad, baby? Because I don't feel safe here in the house with you gone. We have the alarm system and Daddy Five is here, but Daddy Five is an old man. And if someone broke into the house, it would be only him and me to protect Mommy and Tamla. Well, son, I don't think anyone's going to break into the house. I want you to come home, Daddy. Then he paused before telling me, one of the most devastating things I ever had to hear. I know you work real hard, Daddy, and that me and Tamla and all our friends make a lot of noise and everything, so that's why you moved away, because you needed to rest. I tried explaining to him, but words wouldn't come. I was fighting back tears. Finally, I managed to get out. No, son. I'll stop making noise, Daddy. I promise I will. I won't let my friends come over, and when I play, I'll whisper and tiptoe, and you'll never ever know I'm playing. And you'll be able to sleep and sing, and you won't have to live in a different house. It's not your fault. I choked, trying to explain to him just as five, 30 years before, had explained to me. Barry continued to plead. I sat there and held him. I kissed him and told him that I loved him that I would always love him. Then I went into the bathroom and cried my eyes out for an hour. Barry's pleas tore me apart. Downstairs, Claudette was reading in the den. She looked up and saw my reddened eyes. If you'll let me in, I said, I'd like to come back. <laughs>